So are official statistics actually useful? Well, yes, they are. Um, they provide background information and they help to generate a research hypothesis. So if you spot uh, that the proportion of exclusions in Heath field seems to be overwhelmingly male, you might want to come up with a hypothesis based on that statistical fact. Um, arguably, they're representative because they're normally done on a national scale, uh, seen as very comprehensive and also arguably reliable because they tend to be collected in the same format every single year, so you can compare. Um, in terms of how they are used, they provide a research base. Even interpretivists may start by looking at official statistics and then base their research on a statistical anomaly that they spotted. Um, very insightful into their primary data. Um, large scale data allows for a large sample, which, as we mentioned, makes it representative. And it actually meets sociological criteria in terms of being ethical. Can you remember uh, what pervert issues do official statistics present? And are there any particular advantages that you can think of? Official statistics tend to be one of the more practical sources of research. They are very accessible. You tend to be able to get them on the internet. Um, if you're working for an organisation, you can probably get hold of more um, uh, private data. Uh, they are cheap and they are not too time consuming. You can easily make comparisons between different social groups, such as um, the attendance of free school meals children compared to gifted and talented children. And as they're collected regularly and at frequent intervals, that you can get quite recent trends as well. Okay, so crime statistics are collected um, on a monthly basis, for example. But the statistics are generally gathered for their own purpose, and the definitions of key concepts may be different to yours as a sociologist. So, for example, poverty, in one study we looked at differently, was de recently was defined as students who are on free school meals, However, another sociologist might determine poverty based on the occupation of parents. Another one might do it based on where they live. Okay? So you've got to be very clear on how the concepts have been operationalised for the official statistics that you're collecting. Okay? And make sure there's not too much of a difference. While they may be very accessible, it is also worth noting that official statistics uh, collected by private businesses and private institutions are actually quite hard to get a hold of. Okay, so it's only those that are available in the public domain that are accessible. Uh, official statistics generally are one of the most representative research methods. Um, virtually every pupil in the country is covered by a school uh, collection of data, and therefore uh, things like league tables, uh, truancy records, uh, attendance, uh, behaviour management information can be highly representative if you can lay your hands on it. They're very reliable. You can test and retest, uh, therefore finding cause and effect. Um, and generally, if another sociologist came around maybe a year later and did the same bit of research, they would get similar results and that would make it reliable. And the government imposes standards which make statistics reliable and replicable, which all help it, um, official statistics and their reliability. Now, when it comes to validity, um, there is a, certainly a debate about um, official statistics. Interpretivists would argue that so, uh, statistics are socially constructed in the sense that they're actually the product of a social process, not a factual process. Uh, so, for example, they would say that statistics tell us that Afro-Caribbeans underachieve at GCSEs, when actually we know as sociologists one of the many reasons Afro-Caribbeans underachieve is because of the social process known as labelling. Um, they get labelled, they um, get put into low sets, they generate a self-fulfilling prophecy and anti-school subcultures. And these are all social processes that lead to them failing. They don't fail because they're less intelligent, they fail because society has labelled them as being less intelligent. But the official statistics can't tell you that. It is worth also noting that there may be some manipulation of statistics. So, for example, the census is sent out once every 10 years. Uh, maybe you could investigate for me what people are left out of the census. Who does not get an opportunity to fill in the um, once every 10 year survey? 
So are they uh, official statistic facts, social constructs, or are they a form of ideological control? So um, how useful we think official statistics are depends on what theoretical perspective you are coming from. Okay, so if you look at the statements, um, who believes what about official statistics? So which of these statements can you link with positivism? Which of them is interpretivism? And which is Marxism? If you can annotate that on your PowerPoint. Oh, don't worry about that, that shouldn't be there. So, interpretivists believe that official statistics are in no way valid. They do not show the real social facts, but instead they re it represent the labels some people give to the behaviour of others, therefore socially constructed. There are a couple of good examples of this from um, education. Um, for example, league tables reflect the labels that society gives different schools. Um, a failing school, for example, won't attract good students, um, therefore their exam results will continue to go down which confirms the original label of it being a bad school. So actually, the official statistics in the formation of league tables can actually create a failing school as opposed to just observing a fact. Uh, likewise, it can work the other way. If a school seems to be do well, if a school gets some good exam results, they'll get a good position in the late league tables. More people will send their kids there, and what a surprise that school may do well in the following year, and the year after that, and the year after that, continuing to do well. In the world of crime and deviance, when it comes to socially constructed statistics, the best one to think about is possibly the stop and search policy which is guided by police stereotypes and who they think is typically criminal or who's behaving suspiciously. Uh, the police may stop and search more Afro-Caribbeans and therefore catch them maybe carrying a knife or maybe drugs. It doesn't mean that the white person standing next to them wasn't carrying a knife and, sorry, it wasn't carrying a knife or wasn't carrying drugs. They just didn't happen to be get stopped and caught. So the statistics will tell us that black people are more criminal than white people. Marxists, unsurprisingly, are very critical of official statistics. Official statistics, as we've discussed, are collect by, collected by government agencies. So as a result, Marxists argue they serve the needs of capitalism. Okay? Now remember, Marxists view society in a state of conflict between the ruling class and the working class. The conflict being that the ruling class uh, subjugates the working class and exploits them. The state, or the government, is a tool of the ruling class, so any statistics they collect will be biased. So a good example of this is unemployment statistics. Every year, the government changes the definition of unemployment, which actually ends up disguising the true level of unemployment. Now, you guys will be aware that they've raised the particip participation age of school up to the age of 18, and that's got rid of two years' worth of unemployment from the uh, unemployment statistics. Those people who um, a few years ago would have gone straight onto the dole now are no longer classed as unemployed. They're actually students. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using official statistics then? Uh, I want you to use the notes from this lecture and maybe the textbook to finish the, the following sentences. If I can remember rightly, there should be about 10 the top few are the positives of using official statistics and the bottom ones are the negatives of using official statistics. So I'm going to be checking this on the next lesson to make sure that you tested your knowledge in this way. Okay, thank you.